Hello and welcome everybody back to the dumbass class with me, the Dyslexic Gamer. As we carry on our playthrough of Atom RPG, where in the last episode we had run off the devilish cryptocurrency dealers, their crypto pinecones, we would have none of that. And in this episode we're going to carry on exploring um, this rundown little town, city, Whatever it's meant to be. So, let us crack off um, with talking to these crazy individuals who have no shoes. But apparently can afford to have white clothes. Mm. Rule, rules turn you into sheep, but the eyes of the devil... Oh. Is there a... There isn't. Well, let's have a word with you, you crazy person. A young woman in front of you is rather attractive, but there's something repellent about her. Her troubled, ruthless, somewhat wild gaze. Strange manners and unnatural... Unnatural serene smile on her frozen face. As she sees you, the woman makes a gesture, makes a gesture you have never seen before, with two fingers of her right hand and lower, right hand and lowers her head. Those weren't your feet, but Mother Cosmos that brought you together, brought you together today with the Saint Martyrs of the Truth. Venice Brandana. I don't, yeah, I don't know. Um, in the same name of the sitting wolf, I offer teach. I offer teach lessons. I offer to teach lessons of the. Oh, for crying out loud. Utop utopian religion. Religious. Academy in this town. It's spirit of the... Hyprostis pushes me away? I have no idea. <clears throat> Religious mumbo-jumbo, if you ask me. You must have heard my speech. Tell me, servant of God. Did I manage to convince you that the Earth's authority is false? Absolutely. When shall we start the purge? <laughs> People are not kettles. They should walk under their shepherds. Worship only Bana Ban whatever, for she is the mistress. I'm trying to figure out if, if I was meant to read it. Oh yes, look at the obscene gesture with her. The seven s Satan sent oh is army far west but knowledge did not bring him love and happiness in life okay um not at all there must be authority it can't be any other way i don't know somehow i haven't made up my mind yet no offense but tell me are you insane you are insane right mm. Um, well, I'm definitely... <laughs> I like the idea of starting the purge, but let's not. We're coming out of the post-apocalypse. Um, yeah. um, not at all. Authority, uh, there must be authority. There can be no other way. 
The woman spreads her arms in a sultry manner and bows her head, lamenting your ignorance. If only these words could... If only these words could be heard by the muscular outlands who only know the delight of poetry, pleasure, and prayer to their fair gods. In the titanic temple floating over the sea of Lemia? Mm. You see, even those... Uh, alternates of yours had gods. They are... They are rules too, only from above. People are not outlands. Atlant, they need uh, territory. Chaos kills them. I would hate to shame myself in front of the outlands of Len Lemunen. I'm taking my words back. And who are these now? Where is that's yeah let's go with this one um, excellence who lady are you insane the woman sniffs smugly and folds her arms on her chest as if she just won substantial debates I understand child not all of us can see, uh, remain under your rock of unfounded accusations and rigid medieval morals. And for me, it's time for me to bring good tidings to the lovely little village of Ostanchemeni, or whatever it was. With a Commanding hand movement, she summons her associates and they all leave together. Yeah, what strange people. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, we may have messed up there, or I may have messed up there. Hmm. Because I don't understand who the fuck they were. Or what their god was, or what any of their shit was. It just... Eh? Yeah? And by all means, if you do, like, see a word in this and you're like, yeah, that's, that's spelt, that, that word means nothing, let me know in the comments down below. Um, it might save my poor little soul. So, um, you're still... Hmm? You're still staring after these five... After those five, when a surprisingly well-dressed man with a clean haircut approaches you. He stands next to you and places a hand acknowledging no, a hand akimbo on his hips. Oh, okay. Did you see that? That's the sort of people who are roaming the wastelands these days. Squint your eyes at the man. Right, who are you? Stay silent. There are just common people, no worse than most. Oh, it's time. <laughs> the morals. Stay silent. The man is also silently watching the leavings. Excuse me. Watching the leaving cult members. Finally, he clears his throat and says... Yeah, those guys are dangerous, by the way. Would you like to make some money? 
if if there's a zip, then no. If, if there's a proposal here that isn't lewd, then we will see. The man turns and gives you a big smile. Oh dear. He is going to unzip. My name is Igor, and I represent a scientific charity called Myslam, or as our enemies nicknamed us, the Mushroom Cult. Oh joy, do you have a bomb in your pocket? Hmm. We, however, are nothing... We, however, are nothing but a cult. We, however, are... Oh, anything but a cult. Fucking my brain, then. Oh, no, another cult member. Uh, you... You mentioned the opportunity of making some money. What is it you need me to do? Oh, no, another cult member. <laughs> I just like that one. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm not a cult member. We have nothing against the existent against the existing them existing official religions we are just scientific and educated philosophy movement listen I'd like I'd be glad to discuss any questions you have but first I'd like to make you a job proposal all right. The man comes closer to you. Unlike most wasteland dwellers, he doesn't stink of body odor, alcohol, or any other even more unpleasant substance. He only smiles. He only smells of a cl of clean clothes and a bit of road dust. The thing is, I've been following the activities of this so-called whatever you want to call them. For a long time. And the... Um, and the whatever I've drawn are rather grim. Oh, the conclusions I've drawn are rather... Oh, no, 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 that is... Are rather grim. We are dealing with a leader of a... Potentially very dangerous cult. Huh. Are you afraid of competition? <laughs> what do I have to do with it? Continue listening. Get to the point. <laughs> Continue listening. You look like someone who knows how to behave in the wasteland, so... I would like to offer you... Offer... You to follow these cult members for a while. To find out whether they are really dangerous. Well, it, it sounds simple enough. How exactly should I be following them? As far as I know, the cult and her disciples are on a small tour around the waste. She's determined to find some new poor souls who would believe her. Her sermons, her dubious, dubious servants, sermons. Um, right now, they are on the way to a small village. Blah blah. Inter uh, intercept her there and learn about their future plans. All right, I'll do it. Great. Once you've gathered enough information, come back to me. Anyway, if you have any uh, questions about our organisation, don't hesitate either. Just approach me. I'm nearly always standing here in the suburbs of Kostanshameni, maybe, hopefully. Okay, well, that was, um, that was odd. I suppose a number of odd things have been happening here. I would quite like to... I believe I'm walking very slowly at the moment. Yeah, I am. Um, fine, we'll talk to this individual and then we'll look for a shop and try and sell off some of the crap that we have accumulated.
There's a short, disheveled man standing by the entrance to a shed. His eyes are darting from side to side. As he sees you, the man slaps himself on the knees and blurts out with fake enthusiasm. Hello, mister. Did you come to take a look at the Pearl of Constanzameni? Today, only for you, in this room, we have... A real deal mummy of the father of the world's or a Polentritz? I don't know. Commander, our commander Lenin. You have Lenin in there? What? The mummy of Lenin himself? I can't believe it. It simply can't be true. I'm not interested in things like that. Whoopsies scare me. I've heard that Moscow was bombed to smithereens. So how did the mummy uh, remain intact? Oh, it's a long and entertaining story. I can tell it to you inside. To a true... Concierge? I don't know. Like you, I'm ready to show this unique, his historical, captivating sight for a mere 15 rubles. Well, how often do you get to see Lenin, I suppose? I have trouble believing that it's the real Lenin laying there. The man turns a dark shade of red and now his skin colour almost matches that of his tangled beard why so I've no reason to lie if you don't believe me come in and check for yourself check it out for yourself all I'm ask is, n is not to touch the mummy and um, not to take flash photos fine here's your money Let us have a look at this Lenin. Wait. Get going, Labot. Ask me anything about uh, Chief's life. You bend over Lenin in his sarcophagus, which looks like a very ordinary wooden coffin. The mummy doesn't react. Watch the mummy care closely, carefully, closely, whatever. You seem, you seem to notice the mummy's breast rising a little, as if uh, Comrade Lenin is breathing. This is, to put it mildly, slightly odd, as he's been dead for at least 80 years. Sniff the... T sniff the mummy! Hmm. Hmm. It, uh, hmm. That can't be good for you, really. No, just have a little waft. Surprisingly. The mummy reeks of alcohol, cheap tobacco and onions. You narrow your eyes suspiciously. This is not the appropriate smell for the preserved father of the Russian Revolution. Tickle the mummy. <laughs> you raise your finger over the corpse, but the warden of the tiny museum jumps up on his chair and rushes off his chair and rushes to stand between you and your target. No, no, no! You can't touch the exhibit! For a second, it looks as if the Lennon mummy sighed with relief. Rummage in the mummy's pockets! You cast a side look at 
the scruffy warden who follows your every movement. Still, even a... Hmm. Super fluid glance. Super flu Lewis? Glance is enough to see that the mummy's pockets are empty, except from one which reveals a bottleneck. Watch the mummy closely. He's at least dead for eight years. Sniff the mummy. You sniff the mummy, he smells of alcohol. Rummage in his pockets. You don't find anything. What do we? What the fuck do we do with this then? The man beckons you with his finger and proudly places his fist on his hips. Ask me any. Ask me any. Ask me any. Even the trickiest of questions. Okay. Um, tell me how you got the mummy here. Oh, it's a long and entertaining story. Could you be more specific, please? How did you retrieve it from the destroyed Moscow? Have you heard of the secret Moscow... Un Moscow underground tunnels of the KGB. The thing is, apart from ev everything else, I was an agent in this organization and so had access to the tunnels. When the first bombs fell, the first thing I did was to drag our respectable comrade Lenin through those tunnels. I can't well believe it. Another question. No, oh, is it the same thing? Okay. How did you deliver it here? During the Great Migration to the south, I transported the mummy, claiming it was my friend and disguised the leader's true identity under the glasses with a fake nose and a long wig. was so well preserved that all the people we met on our way were convinced he was alive. Not... Just not very talkative. Okay. Um, let's change the subject. I... 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 I don't want... I don't care. I genuinely... I mean... Is that there... No, no, it doesn't. Is there... Fifteen rupees wasted. That's all I can. What a joke. Well, um, who else do we need to talk to? I mean, I don't think we've spoken to this pig farmer bloke. I don't think we've been into that building or this building. Let's come over here and see if we can open this door. Wait, let's not. Let's not. Let's come over here. I forgot we are... We are massively, massively overweight. Oh, the trouble with being a pack rat. Oh wow, there are a few people in here. Well, let's talk to you, considering you just walked in. First things first, do you have anything to... You don't. Before you stands a stocky, clean-shaved man in a dirty shirt and work pants. In his hand... In his hand, he plays with a cigar... A cigarette... Nevosly? Amazing, can I ask you something? The man looks at you. The man looks you over with disgust and then sniffs. He looks at you. Um, ask away if you wanna. 
Powell's life here. Everything is like that, I guess. Shitty, I mean. Those idiots from the... Skooma cult? Yep. About... Yip about unity and development. Whilst I get... Whilst I get where they're coming from with those uh, sentiments. But I'll never accept those bleeding heart ideals of theirs. Enough with all the damned Marxism, I say. Those dreams of utopias brought us into this whole nuclear mess in the first place. Tell me about the mushroom cult. The man spits in disgust and sniffs. Just an average cult, you know, they dress like women folk. And they preach about world peace. It's hard to look at them without cringing. Freedom, equality, brotherhood, my ass. Canis. Canny Lapus Esther. And if you don't like it, you can get out. Mm, okay. Had any rumours? I hear about some dude going around the waste asking people retarded questions like how's life or what can you tell me about yourself? <laughs> dude always finishes finishes fishes for rumours too. I fear that one of these days he'll come here and come up to me and start chatting to me. Okay, I get I get you fair enough. Bit of an asshole. You see a middle-aged man with hair combed to the left side. His eyes, he eyes you with suspicion, as everyone seems to do. Uh, his knuckles are tight. His legs are bent at the knee, as if he is preparing to fight you. You start talking to him, and he prevents that from happening with a yell. Hmm. No, 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 no. Don't even think about it. I don't know you. I... I don't know you. I don't know you. I don't... I have no work for you. Get out of my sight. Goddamn adventurers walking around town like they're hot shit. I spit on you. The fuck? Again, if you should give... Uh, you shouldn't give me... <laughs> hmm. I can break you, old man. What's your problem? How dare you insult me? I am a good, honest man. Attack! Uh, wait to see what happens. The man then lowers his voice as if speaking to himself and not to you. Howdy ho! <laughs> I'm not from around here. Wanna give me a job? That's how you get... That's how they get you. Then you give them a job, he will either fail at it, or do it and ask for twice its worth. And if you won't pay, he'll just rob you blind at night. Get away from me, freak. Git. Hmm. Uh, hmm. I've got better things to do. Good. Just go away. I... No. No, because I'll only end up fighting him, and then it'll be all of these people against me, and... Woman folk, come here. You walk by a short, cute-looking girl who is currently mopping the floors of the tavern. As she si senses you close to her, she... loudly sneezes. Charming. None of you have any money concerning. Achoo! Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, I hope I didn't spit on at you. Oh. The girl covers her face and loudly sniffs. 
Gesundheit? What's wrong? No worries. It's just my allergies, you see. I can't seem to get rid of it. Whenever some tree blooms in the city, I start sneezing and wheezing. Cried a doctor? I did, but he couldn't help... He could not help me. It's too dry here, you see. When something blooms, there's nothing stopping the pollen from entering the air. Then the herbs out in the field start blooming and... Achoo! I tend to lock myself in. I tend to lock myself in. That's how bad it becomes. You work here? Yes, me and... Roistry both help out uh, when we can. He has no parents, neither do I, so Bidrell, the owner, gave us jobs. It's just that my allergies is so bad lately. Achoo! I'm so, so sorry. I barely keep up. Okay, well, you know, better than the other asshole that we spoke to. How about you, sir? You see a well built, grey-haired man bending over maps, compasses and rulers spread all over the desk table it, uh, he seems to he seems to be st he's stuck sunk in thought that's, uh, again, a bit of a weird sunk in thought. He knocks his knuckles against the surface of the table. Look at the table in front of the man. You cast a further glance at the table in front of the old man. There's a map of the wasteland, all covered in lines, notes and scribbles. You instantly see familiar names. This is clearly a map of the region. It looks like a military map. Atom used similar ones. Or battle plans. But you don't have time to think this through, thought through, as the man raises his eyes at you swiftly. For a moment he looks irritated, but quickly composes himself and gives you a friendly smile. A bit, a, a bit, a bit forced. It's not nice to spy. He straightens his broad shoulders with visible pleasure, groaning quietly as he thumb as his as his thumb neck making a cracking sound. <sighs> what can I do for you? Funny, isn't it? I was going to ask you the same thing. Listen, are you by chance from Atom? No, let's not do that. Um, yeah, sure, why not? I see. Interesting. How can you be of use to me? Tell me and I'll do my best. I th think that you're preparing a military operation. I have experience in such things. In any job, there's a place for a smart person. We'd seem to have a common interest. The man eyes you up. And finally nods. I might be wrong, of course, but you really don't look like a fool. Okay. Do you think you... Uh, okay, you... Th do you think you can help me with something if you're interested? I can put you in the picture, of course. So, and... Hmm. In fortuitous? In fortuitous? In... I don't know. A something man has hired me, an influential man, I don't know has hired me to deal with the problem of Autonani 
Orstrunneni. It's now facing. At the moment, I'm looking for people who could who could do this job, but it turns out that that the turns out that these I'd like to see involved are not too eager to respond to my call. Who's your employer, if you don't mind me asking? Why would I mind? On the contrary. He asked me to spread the word about it. It was Dan from the factory. Dennis... Then Wits? Who hired me. Perhaps you've heard of him. He's sort of in charge over the village, so I assume he doesn't want any harm to go its way. But he's not sure his gang can cope. What's the threat? At the moment, it's a big gang of slave owners who have decided to take over the town and turn it into a central base in the wasteland. If, there's, if they succeed, it won't just be the villagers who have it tough, it will be all of us. Who's your employer if you don't... He's already told me that. I see. Go on. Do I need someone to gather all the men I need together, or perhaps even participate in a forthcoming operation himself? It'll be one hell of a clash, trust me, on that. On this. Who do you need? A professional team, uh, someone, the sniper, a trooper known as Major, and some other dude, a well-known saboteur. These three used to work together until they fell out and when each, and each went their own way. Now, uh, they can't stand the sight of each other. Such a pity. I've never seen a better team. Okay, I'm ready to bring about their... Um, I don't know. Uh, I can deal with the problem myself. What will I get for this job? Good money and good loot. I always offer honest pay. Okay, I'll help. Fine. Good. I know that, uh, whatever, the, whatever the name is, um, must be now at the filling station fortress, which belongs to the militia. Uh, rumour has it that the fortress has started working for Perig Paragon and serves as the border guard fortress. I'm not sure about Smith Smithion, but the last time anyone saw him was not far from... Okay. I'll mark these places on your map if you haven't already been there before. You hand over your map. Why do we keep giving our map to strangers? There. Uh, pay them a visit. I don't believe all hope is lost, so you still have a chance to get our good guys back together. Okay, sure, we'll do that. I'm not going to ask you more questions, because this has been a lot of talking. An awful lot of talking. And I still have more talking to do. Joy. Do. The world. Who is this fella? I like him. He has a grenade attached to his chin. Do you have any money? No. Of course. Why would I believe that you would have any money on you? You see a well-built man sipping a cold beer from a high fogged glass. He's slightly, he's slightly crazy smile and weird goggles imply he'll have a lot to 
tell. Oh dear. And judging by ammunition belts that cross his chest, alongside various harnesses, holsters, and on bench. Mm. I don't know. I'm, I don't know. We'll have to be. Uh, we'll have to be utterly polite, or he might become the last conversation in your life. Hey, youngster, have you come to hear the stories or just to chat with me? <laughs> the man gives you a sudden, close look and clicks his finger against his grenade amulet. Mm. But I strongly advise you against making me angry. This grenade is real, you know. I might use it, if needs be, and goodbye everybody. <laughs> Why are you covered in sweat all of a sudden? I'm just joking. Yeah. What's your story? The man moves closer to you, studies your face and grins insanely. <laughs> It's nice being in a place where no one knows about my adventures. I'm a well-known traveller and adventurer back where I'm from, so everyone there has learned my story by heart. And here, I can always find a willing ear. Ah, all right. No. All in all, I saw many wonders and was able to leave with life leave with life every time I survived the atomic battery and Buzenhan's gangs and the Volkerit autonomy uh, the atomic battery once when I was when I was a stalker. A rich scientist hired me to collect a full list of different artifacts from him in the wastelands. At first I thought he was planning to assemble a computer with these unusual... That's not an English word! Aerial dynamic case? Aurora dynamic case? I don't know. The penny dropped by the end when I was... Plobing. Oh, plodding. Hmm, plodding. To meet him with a... Spent... Uranium in a lead case. This nutcase was trying to build a miniature nuclear bomb. I never turned up at the meeting. The Earth has suffered enough from those bombs. Oh. Okay. Let's change the subject. I'm sorry, I'm going to be going now. I am. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll talk to him another time when he tells us about making atomic bombs. A strange man wearing a certain Asian cap a central Asian cap is standing beh uh, before you. His sensibility, hmm. stroking a small, neat beard, and watching the bar patrons closely, he nods in your direction. You have anything to? Oh, rupee! Oh, not many rupees. Do I have, like, anything I can just get rid of quick? Just to uh, give us a bit. That will do beautifully. How many root please do you have? More than enough. And get rid of that. And get rid of that. 
And that'll do for now. That should lower us down enough. There we go. No longer in over, uh, over encumbered. Yeah. Uh, Sal Duo, welcome to the bar. My name is Fidel. How can I help you, amigo? Is Fidel your real name? The man smiles and shakes his head. Of course not. My real name is Holy Jesus fucking Christ. But you can just call me Fidel. I don't mind. Why Fidel exactly? I have a dream of visiting Cuba since I was little since I was little. The Freedom Island. Perhaps you've heard of it. For obvious reasons, the dream died twenty years ago, but the nickname stuck somehow. Okay, let's change the subject. You clear your throat and lean closer to, F to Fidel, whispering, Tension is the highest, tension is the highest form of sensibility. A traitor means a real man. The barman ever so slightly flinches, but otherwise does nothing to give himself away. No. Nonchalantly picks up a glass from the counter. He examines it for stains and he examines it and for he examines it for stains and answers. But it's better to die a traitor than to live a slave. He grimaces. He gestures to a short lad running running to and from in the main hall of the bar. Crosstree, you're in charge. My friend and I need to talk. And you follow me. Ooh. Dun dun dun. Damn it! How did you see? How did you see? You. Mm. Nonsense and lies. Fidel uh, casually peers behind the drapes and casts an appraising look around the bar. Having made sure no one is doing anything suspicious, he turns to you with his hands outstretched. The cost is clear, amigo. Uh, the coast is clear, amigo. No e eavesdroppers. He gives your hand a firm shake. As I told you before, my name is uh, Fidel. With whom do I have the honour of speaking to? Good day. My name is... Labot. The man looks at you in the eyes and slowly nods. Yes, you're telling the truth, Lobot. I understand you're here about the lost expedition of General Morzi. Morzi? I'm afraid I have to disappoint you as I myself know nothing about it. Although perhaps you've already managed to find something out. Tell him everything you know. Fidel listens attentively. He doesn't interrupt nor offer his own comments. When you're finished, he removes his hat and patiently runs the palm of his hand over his bold scalp. Yes, the only thing clear is that nothing's clear. Hmm. Yes, it's all rather tricky. So is it all right? We need to examine this issue thoroughly and figure out what's going on. Whilst also getting in 
getting in character and running errands for the locals. The main thing is to avoid raising their suspicions. Wait, what did you say? We? Fidel uh, gestures theatrically. Theatrically? I'm coming with you, amigo. Together we have a much bigger chance of finding things out. Besides, I'm sick of this work. A man of action, a man of adventure. Here I here I'm tied down to pretty uh pretty spying in some wastrel's home, watering hole. Yeah. Alright, Fidel, let's hit the road then. We have gained a friend. Perfect, it's just me and... Uh, perfect, let me just grab some of my belongings. Da 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 We have our first follower, wherever he is. There he is. So, I'm just going to come over here and grab this loot. Yeah, it is kind of loot. So yes, we have our first character, our first follower, our first friend. Oh, we are going to load you up with so much loot. You are going to be a workhorse, I tell you. A workhorse. But we will check out uh, Fidel's um, character sheet in the next episode. And we will figure out what goodies he can carry for us. So... I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Atom RPG and are looking forward to the next one. So, take care everyone, and as always, bye bye for now.